As a social neuroscientist, I spend much of my time running behavior assays on cuddly rodents, prying into the neural activity patterns of their brains, and developing models to comprehend how their brains orchestrate social behaviors fundamental to their survival. Occasionally, while marveling at just how cute and sophisticated these rodents are, I pause and reflect on how exactly I wound up on this career path seeing as my graduate training revolved around culturing cancer cells in flasks. At that time, I was mentally primed to pursue, at least by default, a clinician scientist career in oncology. But my final medical school rotation in psychiatry turned that plan on its head. Whereas I was accustomed to the reductionist rigor of controlled cell-based laboratory experiments, I felt unexpectedly at peace on the psychiatry inpatient wards, despite being surrounded by the complexity, uncertainty, and sometimes even chaos of real life mental health struggles. I was drawn to the richness of the vast spectrum of human emotional experience. And I found it staggering how early life stressors could have such profound and enduring impacts on people's lives. My mind was flooded with questions about how the human brain enables social relationships, how these pathways go awry in neuropsychiatric disorders, and why these attachment deficits are so challenging for patients to overcome. The realization that I would pursue a career in psychiatry truly felt like serendipity, because it also gave me the courage to venture into neuroscience research, in spite of its overwhelming layers of complexity. It gave me permission to ponder, how can brief exposures sometimes lead to persistent haunting memories? How might a single mutation result in so many distinct behavioral derangements? Grappling with these abstractions was undoubtedly intimidating, but becoming a psychiatrist strengthened my conviction that this was what I wanted to do. I would leverage my scientific training to make a dent in understanding the neural basis of social attachment with the ultimate goal of healing those who struggle with social disconnection. As a postdoctoral fellow in the lab of Dave Minoli at UCSF, I study social attachment behavior in prairie voles, a species that displays lifelong social monogamy. Upon pair bonding, prairie voles preferentially huddle with their mating partners show anxiety-related behaviors when separated from their partners and vigorously reject other potential mates. The rich repertoire of prairie vole attachment behaviors bears a strong resemblance to displays of social attachment in humans and might even engage conserved underlying brain circuits. To better understand the dynamics of vole social behavior, I have developed a suite of computational methods and analytical frameworks that reveal, in an unbiased way, key organizing principles over multiple timescales. Much like how our knowledge of words and grammar help us process language, discovering the short-term syllables of all social behavior and how such syllables get assembled into longer-term phrases sheds light into the language of all interactions. With this behavior interpretation toolkit in hand, I'm now poised to evaluate how genetic and environmental perturbations may modify a vole's propensity to form a social attachment. Of particular interest to me is why a vole without a pre-existing mate is capable of forming a new social attachment, whereas a bonded vole is not. Upon bonding, it is as if a critical period of plasticity has been permanently closed. So far, I found molecular changes that correlate with attachment formation and thus critical period closure. And I'm now manipulating these pathways to determine if they are directly responsible for controlling social brain plasticity. If only we could reactivate plasticity in the social brain, 
we might one day inform improved clinical treatments for patients who struggle to forge meaningful social relationships. I have loved my journey so far in science and medicine because I've had opportunities to learn and to grow. My career has led me to some of my life passions and has even helped me to better understand myself. There is no doubt that addressing the mental health crisis will require the collective efforts of countless people with diverse talents, experiences, and perspectives. And I'm excited to play my part in this important effort as both clinician and scientist.